One thing's for sure, this game is absolutely fantastic looking and there is so much to this game, so let's get into it. Hey everyone and welcome to the Cloud Gaming Extreme channel. Today we're having a look at Mortal Online 2 on the GeForce Now RTX 3080 tier. So first off, yes you can tame things like that beast that you saw in the beginning. And there is some questionable things going on through the world, like people melting in front of your face. The game is, however, absolutely gorgeous. As you can see here, I had everything on cinematic, which I then switched to epic settings with ultra quality DLSS. And it still looks and runs absolutely fantastic. So here's those settings side by side with the DLSS ultra quality epic settings on the left hand side and the cinematic quality on the right. As you can see, it's a bit sharper on the quality with the DLSS side, so that's what I ended up keeping, especially as that gave me much closer to the 100 frames per second most of the time. I say most of the time because moving around, this is an extremely graphics intensive game, and because the game also has streaming of the environment, there is a bit of stream compression when you're moving around, and it does take a couple of seconds for it to catch up when you stay still. This is really obvious if you look at the writing in the top left, you'll see that this sometimes goes a little bit blurry, but then when we stop, everything sharpens back up. There is just so many elements to this game. You do have your standard harvesting, except everything's done with one weapon. So whether that's a sword or an axe or anything else, you can use that to harvest both trees and mine and also taking down animals. Everything does take a lot longer than other games that you're used to, and everything has a finite amount of resources, so you will be at times just sitting mining for probably a good 10-20 minutes in one stint, and taking down animals is actually a lot harder in this game, because as with in real life, if you hit an animal, generally they run away. However, they also take a lot of hits, and when you get your animal carcass, you then have to skin it or butcher it to break down the elements. Otherwise, you'll soon find that just a single carcass will massively overload your inventory and you'll become encumbered. So as you'll see moving around, the RTX 3080 GeForce Now tier really does look good, but the streaming on streaming does take a bit of a hit. And by the way, if you're going to use a bow and arrow, make sure you carry a few hundred with you. As you saw there, the Springbuck alone, and that was a young Springbuck, took around 10 arrows to take it down. Not to mention the fact that you have to chase it around the map. Which can be quite a challenge, especially as they can hide in tall grass. And if taking down animals isn't hard enough, taking down bandits and other huge monsters can be extremely challenging. The combat system is extremely manual and also directional. However, I have had several instances where I'm trying to block is not the direction that I've chosen, so I get hit quite a lot even when I'm expecting to parry. So the combat system is very, very tricky, I would say. It's definitely one of the hardest that i found. Even though I was quite used to this style of combat from Chivalry 2, it really is tricky. So do prepare yourself to die fairly regularly if you start getting into combat. And if you are going to get into combat, make sure that you have all of your skills leveled up before you dive in. But if you die, you might want to try and remember where you are, because if you have a long run like I do back to a priest for resurrection, you're going to have a hard time getting back to all of your gear, or you can just give up and leave it there and start again. As you'll be in this limbo state until you get back to a priest, where you'll then get resurrected, but you will only be resurrected with the very basics, which is only a sword and a map, as well as a torch. Overall, Mortal Online is extremely difficult. There is a huge skill tree, and this is just a place called Haven, and I've already been through all the tutorials, so you're expecting around two hours to finish the actual tutorials and start getting yourself used to this world. This Haven area is a really safe place, apart from a few bandits and a dungeon for you to get practicing on, and you're expected to stay in Haven for around another 10 hours or so, so you can level up your skills and get used to the game mechanics. Once you leave Haven and go into the bigger world, that's where the real game begins, 
and there is a huge learning curve to taking on other players as well as the fact that it's quite overloaded right now and you have quite a lot of queues to get into the main area. Let us know in the comments below if this is the type of game for you or whether it's going to be a bit too much. Thanks for watching, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things cloud gaming and we will see you next time.